I just got finished watching this product be unveiled, the DJI RS2, or some people may know it as a Ronin S2, and it just killed everything. Hi, this is Jimmy from Tempted Scene Studios, and today we're talking about the DJI RS2. I've been a user of DJI gimbals for some time, and I, uh, I've gotten the uh, Osmo and the Osmo Pro, which uses the X5 camera, and this right here is a pretty much fully kitted out, minus the camera, which I've let somebody borrow. And this is what I use primarily when I'm going out in a shoot, right? So, and this has been served me well in the past, I don't know, maybe two and two and a half years since the Ronin S came out. However, DJI came out with a product yesterday, which is the successor to this one, and it kills not only that one, but any other gimbal that is in the past or currently exists on the market right now. And there are two things in particularly that I want to talk about that I feel for me as a filmmaker and for those of you guys out there that are, uh, like to make films and you're low budget indie filmmakers, it, they're potential game changers. So let me talk about those. So like any product that comes out new, you expect an evolution, right? Whether it be incrementally or it's significant. I was expecting something that was incremental, right? Something just the next, another iteration, something that was, okay, they refined some stuff. Some of the criticisms of this one where they, uh, where they address on the SC model where you have locking um, arms so that they don't just swing around endlessly like this one does. Um, you know, with just, you know, you want to be able to lock these in so you can balance these individually, but also when you're storing them, it doesn't just fly around and do this type of thing, right? And then of course the weight, right? This is not a light uh, device, especially when you start adding more bits to it to make it more capable. There, it, it can definitely weigh on your arms, so that type of thing. Um, but it, it served me well. But you would expect those type of improvements on the next iteration. But DJI did so much more than just simply making it lighter, stronger, faster, in my opinion, physically more attractive when they add the stripes and carbon fiber, and of course, increased battery life. But there are two things in particular that I feel to me as a game, as a filmmaker, where I was like, okay, not only do you have my attention, but you have my money too. And for those of you that are curious to know, yes, I did order one already, right? The, the night that I saw it came live yesterday, uh, as of October 14th, today's the 15th, which is also why the reason why my the channel is called 1015 Studios, it just happens to be my birthday. And you know, so that's why it's 1015, if you didn't know. But anyway, um, then there, these two things are particularly in regards to what DJI calls uh, Active Track 3.0. So, so in the past, what DJI has done with Active Track is that it, it will, they use it on their drones primarily. It was an, a way to have the drone follow an object without the user having to fly it. The drone would do it for you and with the hope that it would avoid objects as well. DJI saw the merit of that and applied that to their gimbal lines and specifically the Osmo Mobile series. So you can see that you can have the gimbal hold like that and it'll track a subject while you kind of walk and still hold it and you don't have to worry about composing your subject because it's supposed to be able to do that for you. Um, they implemented it on the SC and later on it came to the Ronin S as well, with the, but the, the, the caveat with that was that you'd have your camera sitting in here and then you have to have a, a holder for the phone because the phone was the actual driving device right, which told the gimbal where to point, not the actual camera that it was sitting in there. So the phone had, was having the app and that would control the motion of that, right? And so it's a cool gimmick but the problem is that you had to relinquish your phone and then also you it wasn't recording the image of that so it would have been preferable if, if the actual camera was using that image inside so that that was a downside with this though with the newest iteration of the rs2 you no longer need a phone to be attached to the top of the of the camera anymore for it to drive itself with the new one uh sitting right where this um, stick would be right now is a 1.5 inch, I think, LCD monitor, and you can actually choose the object you, you want to track in um, 
with the, just the gimbal itself. You don't need the, the phone app to do that. So you can simply select your object within that and like you would use on your camera uh, when you would uh, do a focus point and you would select it right there and then you could have the gimbal point in direction you want to do as you move without an additional device, device needed on top sitting on there. That is really cool, right? And I, can, I know there's times for me that, that was plenty useful when I was doing a shot, on, especially on the last uh, Star Wars movie we did, where I had the camera operator running and he had to have somebody in front of him holding his shirt so he can focus on what he was filming without running into a tree or falling into a pit or any type of that for safety reasons. Had he had the RS2, he could have just sat on the object that he wanted to, the person that was running, which was me, and he could have focused on the predetermined path that we told him for safety reasons, and he would have been the camera would have did the the compo compo composing of the subject for him while he could just focus on his movement. That is powerful. The other part of Active Track 3.0 that I can see instantly benefiting the new RS2 is that now you don't need a separate camera operator. For myself, I, I sometimes I have a crew, but most lot more often than not, I'm working on myself. Like now, I'm filming myself, and it's kind of hard to find somebody else that has free time, especially now during a pandemic, right? So, one of the things that you can do with this is you can put the gimbal uh, on a tripod, and you can use your phone right separately detached from it you can be you know 10 15 feet whatever away from it or even more i think dji advertises up to 100 meters which is insane so you could have this on a tripod using your phone on the app on the dji ronin app you can tell it to focus on you while you're in front of the camera and put a box around yourself on your phone and then the camera will track you so if you're moving within a space, say for example, like you're doing a vlog, a kitchen space, or you're doing something where you have a wide space, kind of like this. I could walk around with the phone in my hand and tell through using the phone as almost as, as a viewfinder to tell that I'm the subject matter to track and it will follow me as I walk in that space. Right? And it not only will do people, but it will do objects. From what I've seen videos of people doing it, it'll actually fall in an object as well. To me, that, that, that's just incredible because now you're, you're, you, can be, you can have dynamic movements without the use of an operator. You can just simply just use the software to do that for you. So DJI has created this system. They're calling it 3D Focused. And this is incredible. So if you get anything about this video, listen to this point here. This is the most important part. It is game changing right here. Okay. So this system, it, it sits on top of the camera and it connects to the Ronin and the camera, of course. And it's a time of flight sensor. So you put it on top and it'll range out using LiDAR detection, right? To tell how far something is, shoots it back to the system itself and that using the follow focus will rack focus for you to, to be in that. And it continuously does it so you have an auto focusing system like that. So for someone like myself, and I hope this works, it seems like it would, uh, that a GH5S user who has uh, uh, inherently a, an auto focusing system that is not that great, I can put the camera on, on manual and rely on the DJI 3D focus to be my autofocus, right? As it uses the uh, focus wheel and a track on the, on, the, on the focus ring of the camera. And that would work. So that inherently, it, not inherently, but it's, it replaces the autofocus on, on my Panasonic GH5S, right? And so this, and to me, would work on any camera that didn't have a good autofocus. This would make it the newest state-of-the-art autofocus right now. Right? And also, not only would it do that, but if you have a cinema camera, that is, uh, most cinema cameras don't have autofocus, right? Where you're using Earth, Black Magic, you know, the, or uh, you know some of the Reds that are, you know, those type of things, Aria, Alexas, those type of stuff like that. They don't have autofocus, right? So by putting this system on it, right, you have autofocus now, right? Um, 
I'm very eager to test it out. Like I said, I already bought one. I bought one yesterday. I just literally, as I'm doing this right now, I just got a notification from FedEx that's being sent to me from, to, uh, from B&H Photo. So I'll be getting it next week. So once I get it next week, I'll be testing it out to see how it goes. The one thing that I won't be able to test is, which is obviously I've been hyping up like no other, I get it, right, is the 3D Focus. The 3D Focus accessory, which is basically looks like a, a square camera with two eyes, right, which helps it to see depth like humans do, right? That's why we have two eyes, stereoscopic vision. Um, I won't have that because it's not available at this time. And DJI is releasing it in, as in, a, in the future along with ex, uh, accessories like the, uh, like in this case, I have the uh, dual arm set up for the Ronin S. These don't work for the new one, so you have to get a, a newer one. But if you kind of understand what, they're, what DJI is trying to do with this, so let me just paint you a picture, okay? You're a single operator, right? And you're trying to do an intricate move, right? Um, obviously you maybe you're having low light problems so your camera's having problems hunting right and that type of thing or you have a camera like myself that doesn't have very good autofocus capabilities so you're doing this complicated shot so what you do is in your in the, on your Ronin on your RS2 you do a accurate track right for your subject and then you're relying on the autofocusing system on that so you can do this moving at the time and and being able to have your subject in focus with not with without you having to bump into something else or fall into a hole or anything like that because you can kind of pay attention on your surroundings knowing that your your ronin at your ronin i keep calling it and dji keeps changing these names the rs2 is going to stay locked on on your subject as you do a complicated move um, that's just game changing for me especially like I said before as a independent filmmaker anyway I hope you find this um, information useful and for those of you who are interested in stuff like this um, hopefully that you can find useful in this information and then if you do get the product um, you can make really creative things with it anyway thanks for watching take care God bless